staff members. Mrs. Beckermeyer had a birthday back in August. We should say happy birthday, birthday to her. If you see Mrs. Musker, our preschool director, make sure you say happy birthday. She celebrated the Big 5-0 this weekend. And today is Miss Beckermeyer's birthday. And on Friday is Mrs. Lewis's birthday. So shower them all with birthday blessings. But let's sing together. And the words will be on the screen. If you don't know this song, we put a little bit different in chapel. So let's sing to all these special people on stage. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, God bless you and keep you, happy birthday to you. Alright, we're going to hope you guys all have an awesome birthday for the celebration this week. You guys can go back to your seats. My Bible holder today, Miss McKenna Anderson from second grade. Our second graders help us as Bible holders throughout the year. So McKenna is our Bible holder and leader today. Let's stand up with McKenna. Everybody stand up, hands over our hearts. And we're going to say our three pledges together this morning, starting with the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior whose kingdom it stands, one Savior crucified, risen, and coming again, with life and liberty for all who believe. I pledge allegiance. To the Bible, God's holy word, I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its word to my heart as my consciousness God. Hey, and let's take a look at our verse before you sit. It's down at the bottom of the screen, and we'll really talk to just a little bit about it today. But let's read it from Psalm 145. The Lord will keep all His promises. He is faithful in everything he does. Psalm 145, verse 13b. I'll be interested to say this here. You guys may be seated. And I'm going to go to the Lord and pray for our chapel today. And then our song is going to be making their way up here to lead us in a couple songs this morning. Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you for bringing us together this morning at school especially for bringing us all together here for chapel today. May we hear your message today. May we enjoy the songs that we sing as we worship you. I pray, Lord, that you would just bless our entire day. Bless all these special birthdays that we recognize this morning. Um, may they enjoy their special day or have enjoyed their special day already. And I pray, Lord, that you just continue to bless us as we go through this school year and all the many great things that we're going to accomplish and get done this year. But Lord, especially for these chapels this year, I pray that you would open up our hearts and help us to learn more about you and the many awesome promises you give us and that you are faithful to. And Lord, just bless this chapel now. As Heart Song comes up here to sing, may we ring out our voices to you in song. And we give it to you in your name. Amen. All right, Heart Song is a special group of junior hires that work with Mrs. Tanka to learn songs and motions, and they're going to be sharing a couple things with us this morning.
You may be seated. Thank you, Heart Song. That's a good job. Beautiful song. I think we're going to sing more of that this year. But I'd like to start transitioning a little bit from last year. Do you guys remember last year's theme a little bit? Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust. How many of you guys trust Mr. V? <laughs> oh, I heard some no's. Well, um, who maybe would like to make some money this morning? That's because you all, all have your hands up there. You don't even know what I'm going to ask you to do. All right. I have a $20 bill here. Here's the thing, um, I promise, I promise to give you this $20 if you allow me to break two eggs on your head. Alright, um, Ethan, come on up. Satan would be one to make a promise and then like 
here's twenty dollars, but no, sorry, I'm going to keep it. Right? That would be something Satan does, right? Okay. We get lots of promises, or maybe you even feel like your friends promise you something and then they take it away, or something like that. Okay. But what we're going to be talking about this year is that Jesus is not like Satan. Jesus is unlike anybody else. And Jesus is always trustworthy, always faithful, and always keeps his promises. So I'm going to act a little bit like Jesus, and I'm going to keep my promise. And there's your $20. Wow. Thanks for being here. I'm going to go back to your seat. See me afterwards. I got some shampoo, and we can get that back out of here. Here's your glasses. All right, give it up for Ethan being the score. Have you ever been promised something and then you're so excited about it and then maybe you didn't get it? Maybe you didn't get it because somebody forgot their promise or worse, maybe because they broke that promise to you. How did that maybe make you feel when it happened? It, it probably made you feel unappreciated or unimportant. It probably made you feel like whoever made you that promise didn't really care about you because they didn't follow through with their word. Well, God and his promises are nothing like that. Our verse this year, Psalm 145, 13b, the Lord is trustworthy in all his promises and faithful in all he does. Okay, the Lord will keep all of his promises. What an amazing thing to know that God is trustworthy, like we talked about last year, and God is faithful to his promises and his actions. He keeps his promises because he is faithful. He will never lie to us. And God doesn't keep his promises to us because we're good enough. Okay? Because we really could never be perfect and good enough. Because we sin every day and fail. But God does it because he's trustworthy and he loves us. It's pretty incredible to know that God, the one who we're supposed to follow and trust with our lives, is faithful and trustworthy in everything, boys and girls. Everything. We can trust the Lord. So this year in chapel with our theme, we're going to be looking at some of God's promises in our lives. The Bible is full of them. The Bible has over 7,000 promises of God to man. And we're just going to be taking a look at a few of those. Like he promises to give us rest. He promises to give us wisdom. He will meet your needs. He will make all things work for the good. He promises eternal life, one of the most important promises that he gives us. His love never fails. He promises to protect us in all things. These and many, many more will be shared throughout the year, maybe by some of your classes, by youth pastors and pastors from local churches. So I'm excited to see what the Lord's going to do with us in chapel this year. So how, what can we do to make chapel meaningful for us this year? So I just want to close by talking about what we can do while we're here at chapel to make chapel a great time and that we can learn from. So I use the word promise. This is Tanker. I'm not sure if you already put it up there. And I want to give you something for each letter of the word promise. So I know some of the older kids are taking notes and you guys can write this acronym down. But the first letter is P in promise. A positive experience. They come to chapel ready to have a positive experience. Right? Come with an attitude to worship. Sometimes we can have grumpy days, be like, oh, I really don't want to go to chapel today. Right? And then that's really what you're going to get out of chapel is a whole lot of nothing and grumpy. Right? Come with an excited spirit to learn something, to sing a new song, to get involved. It's a time to connect with God, but it's also a time to connect with your classmates and your teachers and everybody here as we come together to worship God. Chapel is what you bring to the table as well. So bring a positive self to chapel. Letter R, raise your voice, okay? Not when the speaker's talking, but what I'm talking about is sing. When we sing, we want to lift our voices nice and loud. And we then we want to focus on those songs and the lyrics. Even when Heart Song is singing, they might be singing solos or duets or trios or whatever. We could be listening to the words of what they're trying to share with us. 
And as we sing, we do motions. I'm sure we'll do motions, we'll do dances, we'll do all these different things to worship this year. Okay? Get involved. Raise your voice. Don't be ashamed to sing. Even if you can't sing well, sing. The Lord loves it. The Lord loves it. And you feel more involved in chapel as well. If you don't like to move or dance, you don't have to, but it's a lot more fun with your class when we move and praise and worship the Lord. So don't be ashamed to worship and sing and belt it out this year. And we're going to close in a song a little bit, and I hope we can belt it out. Uh, let her go. Open up your heart. Hey, for little kids, this might be a little harder to understand, for, but the older kids really know. We talk about it at the retreat. We talk about it all the time. Opening up your heart to the Lord. Hey, sometimes this thing right here can be very, what we say, hard. Okay, We want to soften our hearts to the Lord. We want to receive the Word of God as much as possible. If we open up our heart, then God can work in you. Okay, there's going to be some things in chapel we might not want to hear because it maybe makes us feel guilty or feel bad or, oh, I didn't do a good thing. But the, the good news is always great news from the Lord that we are forgiven and that we can learn and that we can grow as Christians. So one thing in chapel this year we could really... You could learn one good thing in chapel this year that could change your life. You never know. Okay, so open up your heart to receive whatever the speaker's coming in to talk about. Hey, letter M, you guys don't do this necessarily in chapel, but it's an opportunity to learn more memory work. Okay, you guys have memory verses every week that you memorize, but there's many opportunities that pastor's going to come in and share a verse. Some of you might teach you a verse. We have this verse that we're learning today. All right, so write those notes down. Write those verses down, older kids, middle school, and read them over and learn the verses of promise that will be shared throughout this year. Letter I is invite God in. Very similar to open your heart, but invite God in. Meditate, pray, reflect, focus on the right things, and learn. And let your heart be inspired by God this year. Right? He can change your heart and how you feel. You're having a bad day with your friends? Chapel might liven it right up. You might learn something to help deal with your friendships. Maybe you're having a rough time at home with your parents. Chapel might say something that inspires you to be better at home. Okay? So invite God in. When you're in chapel, when the speaker's speaking, the pastor's speaking, make sure you're listening. Okay? Don't be talking to your friends or, or goofing around. Those are Satan's ways of distracting you from learning. Okay? Inviting God in. Because Satan doesn't like it when we're learning about the Bible. Okay? So he likes to give you things to distract you and, and get your attention away from learning something really good for your heart. So always invite God in, reflect, and focus on what he wants you to do. Okay? Uh, let him ask. This is one of my favorite, favorite words for chapel is savor. Okay? Um, not a word that you guys use every day, but savor is tasting or delighting in something, okay? We want to taste something that's good and delight in it. So just like, um, well, I have a few things over here, some of my favorites. Just real briefly, I don't have enough for everybody, and I won't eat in front of you this year, but Twix bars, okay? You guys like chocolate and caramel? Look at that. I'm going to eat that later. Hey, like when I put that in my mouth, I'm just so hungry and I have a Twix bar. Oh, that's so good. It just makes me feel so good. And maybe some of you guys like, I like, I like blow pops too. I don't know if you guys like blow pops. But if it's a really good sucker and you put it in your mouth, and as soon as it hits your tongue, you know the saliva starts to go on. It's just like so tasty. And then you hit that bubble gum and it just starts all over again. Okay? All right? I want you guys to savor the Word of God just like your favorite food. Okay? Maybe it's not candy. Maybe it's a salad. I don't know. Maybe it's a juicy, thick steak or a juicy hamburger or a cheesy pepperoni pizza. I don't know what it might be. But think about how that tastes and just how good it is. And oftentimes, you want more. And that's how I want you to feel about chapel this year and how I want you to feel about the Bible. Like, savor it. Really like it, taste it, and then sometimes you're like, oh, that was so good, or you go to your favorite restaurant, and the food was so good, and what do you usually want to do? You want to tell people about it, right? So our last letter is be excited to share. 
you learned something, share it with some friends. Go home and share it with your parents. Okay? Parents, I love it when you get, on Wednesdays you ask your kids, what did you learn in chapel today? All right? And kids, when your parents don't ask you, maybe you just talk to your parents about what did you learn in chapel today. Be excited about what you're learning and be excited to kind of pull what I always like to say, pull a nugget. Remember last year we talked about chicken nuggets, I think, at this chapel? Pull one nugget. Have one nugget that you get from chapel, that golden nugget that you can share your parents every Wednesday night when you go home. These are ways that I promise you, you can have some great chapels this year. We're going to have a lot of different kinds of chapels. Every class is going to share a special holiday chapel. In a couple of weeks, we have Ned, who's going to be here, the yo-yo guy we haven't had in a few years. We have lots of different special chapels planned for this year, and I'm excited for what God's going to be doing in those. So promise me that you guys will open up your hearts, savor things, and just delight in what God wants to do in your hearts this year through chapel. As we talk about standing on the promises and focusing on God's faithfulness in our lives. All right? I want to close in prayer, and then I want to, we're going to stand up and sing our final song. All right? Will you invite heads with me? Lord, thank you for this chapel time. Thank you for allowing us to come together to learn your word. I pray for our chapels this year, all of them, Lord, every week, Lord, that they would be rewarding, Lord, that you would touch the hearts of these kids, to help them grow in you, to learn more about you, and to learn about your promises, especially the promise of eternal life, the opportunity to accept you into their hearts, Lord, and to live a life for you. And Lord, I just uh, thank you for making that ultimate sacrifice of dying on the cross for our sins and the promise that you gave us of lifting us up and forgiving our sins. So Lord, bless our chapels this year. Bless the rest of our school day today and just be with us now as we worship you in this last song and sing it out to you. And uh, we just give it to you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's stand up. And I think this song is familiar to most of you. If not, the chorus is really easy. Yes, I will. I want to hear you guys sing it out nice and loud. The song's about God's never failing. He never fail, fails us. And his always faithful to us. So let's sing this song out as we close up today.
like are dismissed. If we could let the younger ones in the front rows out first and then gradually work our way out. It'd be a little smoother getting out of here. Have a great day, everybody.